My name is Adi Stern from the Weizmann Institute in Israel. I'm here to introduce you to the quantum Hall effect, one of the most beautiful physical phenomena I'm aware of. Let us start with the classical Hall effect. You know the story. Electrical current flows in the x direction. A magnetic field is applied in the z direction, perpendicular to the plane. It applies a Lorentz force directed in the y direction. A voltage then develops in the y direction to counteract the Lorentz force, and that is the whole voltage. Since it is there to cancel the Lorentz force, which is proportional to the magnetic field, we expect the whole voltage to be linear in the magnetic field. So will we expect b the whole resistivity, the ratio of the whole voltage to the current? Well, at low temperatures, two-dimensional clean systems, the whole voltage starts linear in magnetic field, but then it develops steps. Look at this plot. You change the magnetic field by tens of percents, and the whole voltage seems not to, to change at all. It's on a plateau. It looks like a straight line. In fact, when we say that it does not change, we mean it does not change. When we say it is a straight line, we mean it is the straightest line you have ever seen. It is precise to a level of one part in a billion, give or take. Not only that, the whole resistivity is quantized to that level of precision in units of h over e squared, the ratio of Planck's constant to the electric charge squared. Think about it. It is independent of details. It is independent of details such as the material used, the shape of the sample, the name of the experimentalist, or the day of the week. This is what we call a topological number, a topological phenomenon. Now look at how the, sa the sample looks. This is the original sample where the fractional quantum Hall effect was discovered. You'll hear about the fractional effect later. Would you imagine that from such a dirty looking sample, the ratio of two of the fundamental constants of the universe would emerge? I have to say before going into details, this is so beautiful. And as we will now see, this data tells us loud and clear a few points that we should note. Let us go over them. First, together with the quantization of the whole resistivity, as we see, the longitudinal res resistivity looks as vanishing. What this says is that the current and the electric field are perpendicular to one another. Curiously, this implies that the longitudinal conductivity vanishes as well. While the whole conductivity is quantized, this time in units of E squared over H. Now, if the whole conductivity is an integer number of E squared over Hs, we call the effect the integer quantum Hall effect. If it is a fraction, you guess, we call it the fractional quantum Hall effect. In fact, the temperature dependence of both the longitudinal conductivity and the longitudinal resistivity is activated, going like exponent of minus T0 over T, indicating that the state is gapped. That is, that there is an energy gap between the ground state and the first excited state. We are familiar with gap systems, most notably the Bloch insulator, where the conductivity is activated. Gap systems generally show activated behavior of various response functions. But here there is a twist. The gap must close at the edges of the sample. To see that, let us look at an, at an annular geometry. This geometry will teach us quite a bit. Let us imagine that the bulk of the annulus is in a quantum hole state. And now we turn on a magnetic flux inside the hole at the center of the annulus. We turn on the magnetic flux, we get an azimuthal electric field, which leads to a radial current and to a polarization of charge between the interior edge and the exterior edge. Now, if the bulk has a longitudinal conductivity, this charge could have relaxed, like in a metal. But in the absence of such a conductivity, like in a quantum hole state, the charge accumulates at the edges. But then there must be unoccupied states for the accumulating charge to occupy. And since the perturbation we apply to the system, the electric field that is, is of low frequency, we do it very slowly, and is of the order of 1 over the system size, the energy of these states must be close to the chemical potential. So the gap must close at the edge. Let us reiterate and generalize that. It is an important point. At the interface between two regions, of different hole conductivities, one here, one here, there must be a closure of the gap in between. 
The analysis system that we are looking at may then be viewed as made of three pieces. The exterior edge, that is one dimensional and gapless. The bulk, that is two dimensional, gapped and somewhat dead. And the interior edge, that is one dimensional and gapless again. But note, you should be careful when thinking about the edges as one dimensional system, systems in the way you think, for example, of a quantum wire. For example, note that the charge on the edge is not conserved. As we saw, the radial current that we uh, push when we uh, change the flux changes the charge on the two edges. Another way of saying that is, if you try to peel off the edge of the sample, if you just cut it, you will end up with a thinner annulus, but still with gapless states at the edge. Now let us add another ingredient a purely quantum mechanical one. The spectrum of the annulus must be periodic with respect to the flux at the central hole, and the period must be one flux quantum, H over E. This is the Aron of Bohm effect. So if we set the annulus to be in its ground state with zero flux at the hole, and we change the flux adiabatically to one flux quantum, we will end up with the system still being in an eigenstate. It will not be the ground state anymore since charge has flown from one edge to the other, from, let's say from the interior to the exterior, but it will be an eigenstate. This is completely general. It relies only on the system being in a quantum hole state. Next, let us limit ourselves to non-interacting electrons and leave interactions for far later in the course. For non-interacting electrons, the eigenstates may be described in terms of single particle states which are either occupied or vacant. At the ground state, all single particle states below the chemical potential are filled, and all those above the, uh, above the chemical potential are vacant. At excited states, some empty states get filled, and some occupied ones become vacant. As we saw, as we turn the flux on, charge moves between the edges, for let's say from the interior to the exterior, until when we get to one flux quantum, the system ends up in an eigenstate of the system. Since the only eigenstates available at low energy are at the edge, turning on one flux quantum must result in a transfer of an integer number of electrons between the edges. And this statement is precisely the statement that the whole conductivity is quantized to an integer number of E squared over H. It also makes a connection between the quantum Hall effect, for now the integer quantum Hall effect, and the notion of a pump that was discussed in earlier classes. The thought experiment we discussed is a pump that makes electrons go from one edge to the other. 